Okay, so uh, welcome to this presentation, MPST, what, why, and when to use it. So my name is Javier Lassa. I'm a platform architect within Intel. Um, yeah, Jeff Kennedy, systems architect, Dell Technologies. Hi, I am Eduardo Estrada, system architect from Intel. Okay, so in this talk we will be talking or, or explaining a little bit about what is MPST, why we are using them, why we introduce it on the MXIO specification, and also provide some application examples on where does it make sense to use it. So let's start. We have just had a sight and signaling um, meeting before. Um, MPST is another out-of-band interface that we're using, and as explained uh, on the previous meeting, it's a half-duplex, uh, one megabit interface that can be used to communicate between the host processor module and our uh, peripheral devices. Right? It is adopted right now in the PCI SIG based specification. And uh, this um, definition of a sideband signal uh, kind of makes sense in this environment. And it's basically a method of signaling events and conditions using physical, physical signals that are separate from the link between the two components. Right? So it's an alternate signal that it's not in the data path. Um, I'm intending to be providing a brief overview of why MPST was developed. And uh, it makes sense once you start looking at the MXIO and how we were defining these flexible IO sideband interfaces in order to be able to cover the different, uh, the different endpoint peripherals and at the same time uh, optimize our pinouts to be able to support these different form factors. Right? So, um, this PCI, this flex IO segments has also been adopted by the PCI chemex specific, specification. And the idea of these signals is that they can behave once you made uh, with the peripheral and discover what's on the other side, they can behave as whatever you want, right? They could be a single um, function signal, they can behave as a differential signal or, or a differential wire or a serial interface. Um, these flex IO bands are flexible enough uh, if you see on the MXIO specification. However, we are mandating only two of them uh, for, a, for a connector that is physically a BI-8 PCIe uh, compliant device or, or comp compliant connector. Uh, the reason behind this is that we don't want to overload the host processor module to be supporting all these different flex IO interfaces, right? So that is left to the HPM designer. Uh, on MXIO, we are mandating the FlexIO and FlexIO1 and FlexIO signals to have a specific topology to be connected to the HPM. So when you connect a system board or, or, or a peripheral card on the other side, um, you go recognize what's on the other side, and then you uh, are able to communicate whatever you need from the HPM to the endpoint device via these FlexIO interfaces. On the MPIC power connector, we also have this um, definition of flexible sideband signals. Uh, we have these six sidebands that are now um, accompanying our power um, cables, and they have a specific function, right? However, these um, flexible sidebands are recommended functions only on the peak power connector. As you can see, we are supporting PESTI or, or it's optional and recommended use to support PESTI in the present signal. Uh, and, and we have a couple of them, uh, extras. So again, uh, as in the same previous presentation, right, um, this type and definition um, behaviors that are usually fixed to a single function like the wake signal, the power break, uh, the power disabled on the DSFF are normally really low utilization usage. And if you dedicate a wire and a connector to transmit the signal from the baseboard to the endpoint, you are basic, basically paying, paying a tax for a signal that you are going to be using really, really small amount of time. Okay. Now, on the other side, if you stray away from the specific picking usage requirements, uh, you, you will be breaking the, com the compliance or you will be losing some feature supports that you might need at the time that you, you really want it. Right? And one of the key ingredients that we have is interoperability, which is a key tenant of our open ecosystem um, uh, environment. 
So um, what can we do when we have these flex IO overloaded signals uh, or, or we get to a, to a situation when these flex IO signals are not enough and, and this is why PESTI um, um, born, right? Okay, so what is PESTI? It's a peripheral sideband tunneling interface that extends the number of sidebands that can be signaled between an HPM and a peripheral. Um, it's a very simple protocol. Uh, again, from a peripheral side, it's completely optional. There's no requirement to tunnel sidebands if they're not required. Uh, additional overload functions uh, on top of an existing presence signal does not require any additional physical conductor or uh, pins to be uh, consumed to implement this feature. In addition to uh, discovery of, of what is attached, uh, other overloaded functions include the ability to discover the couplings, the cabled connections between an HPM and a peripheral to determine the end-to-end -end physical routing topologies for things like the data fabric, I2C topologies, et cetera. It's a lightweight protocol, half duplex, serial communications. This is your traditional COM port type of mechanism. Uh, odd parity provides a single bit detection of a character. Uh, 250 kilohertz baud rate is uh, you know, moderate speed and 3.3 volt LVC MOS signaling provides ample noise margin as well as uh, compatibility with a very wide uh, uh, assortment of low-cost PLDs and microcontrollers. On, it, and these attributes were selected to make the reliability on par with a discrete flex IO signal. So if all of these attributes are, or optional functions uh, are, are truly optional, as a system designer, as a peripheral designer, how do I decide when to use none, one, or all of these uh, three optional features. So essentially you have three tier, three performant tiers of sideband signaling across an MXIO connector, for example. The first is discrete, or discrete flex IO. Most performant, no protocol overhead, no BMC dependence, um, you know, super easy, straightforward. The trade-off is they're very scarce. Uh, as uh, described by Javier, there's only two per by eight. Uh, the next tier is the tunneling interface. No additional signals. There is a light protocol overhead. Again, no BMC dependence. But there is an implementation tax on, on the peripheral, which we will go into. And then the third tier for uh, tunneling is just using the existing I2C side, sideband um, to a virtual or physical GPIO expander for basic control and status queries. Now let's go into the first example use for a use case actually does not utilize any sideband tunneling. Um, uh, the platforms, the, the system representation here on the left is the platform, the logical combination of the HPM and the DCSEM, the HPM PLD on the right, a riser or interposer that adapts the MPIC and MXIO connectors to a PCIe chem slot. Down the middle, you can see the source MXIOs and destination MXIOs on the riser, and then the source MPIC, uh, in this case MPIC2 on the HPM, and uh, the destination on the riser. In this case, the MPESTI uh, recommended signal on the MPEC connector is just statically asserted low. This is the same cable presence that's been, <laughs> that's been uh, in place in servers for uh, decades. So this identifies to the BMC that something is attached. Now what is attached? The I2C segment known by the BMC due to the platform identity is able to query the through EEPROM on the, on the riser to determine what is attached. By knowing what is attached, it has knowledge of a GPIO expander on this uh, interposer card to provide a stimulus back through the destina destination XIOs on the peripheral to the HPM source XIOs to determine where and to which source, uh, source paths uh, 
the peripheral is attached to. Now the clear advantages here is that there's uh, the, the, the 4-bit GPIO expander is immutable. It's an ASIC. It doesn't require for more updates. It does not require security attestation. Um, broad multi-sourcing is available, small, cheap, etc. And it, and it meets all the, all the requirements without uh, a, a, even a light protocol uh, PESTI. So just to complete the design map for this, uh, the Camerizer, we're going to ahead, go ahead and uh, uh, document uh, the Flex.io assignments that would be configured by the BMC within the HPM to select the behavior uh, for those signals. Uh, one of the more interesting ones is the power enable. Um, with DCMHS, the power gating is moved to the peripheral. It's no longer on the HPM or motherboard. And the power enable can be configured by BMC depending on what is attached. Is it a CXL memory card? Is it a, a GPU accelerator? Uh, is, is it a DPU? In the case of a DPU, that you know, it's uh, quite desirable to have its own operational power state independent of the host. While the host is off or in a standby state, the DPU still wants to be operational to provide infrastructure offload. In that case, the power enable would be configured to be asserted during, during uh, the host system power off state. And so, um, you know, I already talked through, you know, the, the basic five-step process of detecting that something is attached, detect, uh, being able to query a fruit to, to uh, determine what is attached, use the GPIO expander to determine uh, where to the HPM is it attached, and then be able to select the behaviors uh, for, for the flex IOs, as well as uh, communicate to BIOS uh, the, the paths that were discovered, uh, and, and which indicates to the BIOS how to uh, bifurcate or aggregate the PCI links appropriately. And now I'll pass it off to Eduardo to go through additional examples. Thank you, Jeff. So I'm going to be talking about a couple of examples of the implementation of MPST. Um, just as a friendly reminder, um, I'm going to start with the uh, primary control panel. The pinout and connector specification is documented in the MPIC uh, um, specification. So let's start um, with the signal. So we could have um, the SPI to access a flash. And now we're going to have this uh, utilization of the cable present signal with uh, MPST capabilities uh, to have virtual wires through a UART interface. When you have that virtual wire capability with MPST, you could have either outputs from the HPM into the control panel that could help you out to manage LEDs. And you could have inputs from the control panel into the HPM that could be feedback from uh, power buttons and other required interface with the user. On top of that, you could also have uh, the status, status signals from the Type-C controller that you may have in your uh, control panel. Alternatively, um, you could have still I2C access because the pinout uh, that we are documenting in the MPIC specification from the primary control panel offers I2C as well. So you could have access to a temperature sensor, for example. Or uh, as well, you could emulate a FRU in your PESTI agent uh, programmable device or microcontroller. Um, also, as a reminder, you, you don't have to use all the Cyban signals on, on your connectors. So this is an example that the Cyban 3 and Cyban 4 are not used at all. And as mentioned uh, by Jeff, we, we have a predefined assignment for the Cyban signal 2 for power enable because we don't want to be drawing uh, power from the USB controller when you don't have to. So um, this is an overall example of uh, the utilization of MPST with the full capabilities. Now, uh, let me take a look. Okay, it looks so-so. So 
this is a, an interesting example of what happens when you have multiple levels of capabilities on PESTI. As mentioned by Jeff, you could have a simple present pull down, you could have um, a, a powerful MPST uh, UART capabilities, or you could have a third met method that it could be just using a um, I2C based GPU expander. But when you're trying to interconnect something that is hyper flexible, that you could have targets in the HPM and multiple, um, sorry, uh, initiators in the, in the HPM and a multiple var variety of system boards with different capabilities as targets, this could get uh, quite messy. So I'm going to try to uh, make this as quick as possible. Step zero, upper left, the HPM is aware that you have a power distribution board and sends a stimulus into the power distribution board CPLD. So this, this, the PLD on the power distribution board identifies, okay, who is sending me an uh, initiator? So by doing that, in this interesting array of two MOXs, one is specifically trying to get the initiator. So it's going to help you to route uh, in the step number, uh, I think, two. You detect who is the initiator. In step three, you configure and isolate your source. In step four, you provide the payload from the power distribution board into the HPM. And then you could start ma making a daisy chain in your upper MOX, which is a destination. You could start identifying what type of devices are in the other side. So in step number five, upper left, middle, it could be a simple present. That simple present could kidnap your protocol. So you need to have a timeout to say, okay, this is a simple present. There is no communication with PESTI. Let's jump into the next gate. Then you could have a system board that doesn't have MXIO. Uh, that, and a typical example could be a fan board. So the only path to pass PESTI communication is through the MPIC uh, connector. So this is another kind of corner case. And finally, uh, you could um, uh, detect, identify system boards which have PESTI capabilities. So you could probably rely on the MXIO communication for your uh, transactions and just using uh, the peak power for cable inventory. You just need to pay attention to a couple of scenarios. You don't want to have a deadlock between target to target. Um, but yeah, this is just one example of how this uh, hyper flexibility and agnosticity could be get quite messy. So um, just what are other topics that we are on, under investigation um, is uh, what are the voltage um, handshake between MPEST and Flex.io, what will be the negotiations on baud rate, uh, any requests that you may request, and please uh, check a couple of other DCMHS talks that have been already or are going to be about to be talked about. Call to action, get involved, um, send us, shoot us an email if you have any question, and as has been, everybody has been mentioning, um, join us. Thank you.